Um, welcome everyone. Oh my gosh, it's so weird. My tongue is yellow because I just got done eating my Prego Pops. So those who don't know, <laughs> I'm dealing with third trimester nausea. Um, and so I love these Prego Pops if there's any. Anyways, I like them. But anyways, so just to introduce myself, my name is Rachel Wiggum and I am an Ambassador Diamond. I've been with the company for six years, which is insane to me. Just celebrate my six years in June. Um, hopefully that's not distracting to you guys because if I would have known that I wouldn't have eaten it beforehand. Um, but I'm just so excited. We had a, when we were deciding, my leaders and I and a few other people, we were deciding on what we wanted to do for this month. Someone mentioned doing a back to school Zoom and I thought it was an amazing idea because we are going back to school and we have people who are doing this business from different walks of life that can give tips. And we, some of my, the people on my team have been around for a very long time and so they've kind of gotten to a groove of what really works. And so we just wanted to offer some tips today. If you guys have questions, we'll answer them at the end. Uh, but please feel free to add, put to put them in the comments. We'd love to hear feedback and what's working for you because just what's working for us does not necessarily mean that it's going to work for you. So we love to hear all different types of ideas of what's actually working. So um, I am a full in this business full time and I've been in this business full time for five years, which is such a blessing. Want to do it? Been a full time family for four years. So my husband has been home for four years. We have two kids, one that is thirteen and another one who is almost two, um, and then we have a baby who is on the way. I should be 32 weeks on tomorrow, so yay. And shout out to our products because I'm not real big and chunky. So we're gonna jump right in. I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have, um, I'm gonna ask the first question, and then I'll have each girl, um, each woman, excuse me, each woman <laughs> um, mute themselves, and I'll have them introduce themselves at the, at the time that they, um, answer the first question. So the first thing that I asked them was, hold on, let me pull, pull up my notes. The first thing that I asked them, well, so I want you guys, when you hop on, just to say, you know, what your name is, where you're from, um, how many kids you have, you have any kids, how long you've been in the business, what your rank is, um, and so on and so forth. And then the first question, and I'll answer it last, is what are your top three things that you implement when school starts. So we know that when kids go back to school, for some, and you're, I'm, I'm excited for you to hear these different perspectives because when you go back to school, things change, like they're totally different. Some are maybe super lax and all over the place, um, but you know you have to get back into that structure when school starts. So we'll start, um, who are we gonna start with? Sam. All right, we're gonna start with Miss Samantha. So what are the top three things that you implement when school starts? So go ahead and introduce yourself and share your top three. Hello, thank you for letting me be on. So my name is Samantha Simpson. I've actually been with the company for five and a half years. Um, I have an amazing story. And so I actually went diamond um, three years into the business and I'm going double. So I'm super excited and pumped um, to really continue to elevate. And so, yeah, so I am a single mom of two. When I actually joined this business, my kids were just turning like two and three. So they were super tiny. Um, my oldest has a learning disability. And so he was nonverbal actually for the majority of my time in this business. Um, he finally started to speak when he was four and a half, almost five. And so he's just turned eight recently. And so I've had a lot of life happening around um, while I've still been inside of this. So that is kind of my story in a super fantastic, fun way. So my top three things that I implement when school gets started, um, what I've really found this year so far is schedules. So there's two separate types of schedules I keep. Shout out to my <laughs> mentor for the family calendar. Um, I actually have it, but we're going to go over it later. So I'm going to show you guys in detail, but um, a family calendar. So that way my kids are able to see what's going on, what our weeks look like, what our month actually looks like at a, at a glance. So they're not always asking me 27 times what's what's about to happen um, because I've allowed this business to kind of take over at times. And so they almost started to anticipate long nights, crazy schedules, us bouncing all over the place. Um, and so that, that family calendar has really helped uh, bring a core back to us and really kind of get our lives back together and back on track. Um, the second thing is fun. So because they are super energetic boys, I have to be willing to put fun into what we do. Um, so I, I, again, we'll describe that more is when it comes out to the, the calendars we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, 
And then my third thing is just like personal care. So as a single mom, um, we potentially all have struggled with not giving into ourselves, right? Just giving is so much, we, we actually tend to overcompensate. Um, and so just really being aware that if, if I want to be a great mom, that was one of the affirmations, it was a post I shared this morning, um, for me to be a great mom, I have to be good. And so really learning what that looks like and how the hierarchy and how all of that comes together. Um, so that way, if, if I can be whole, then I can be whole for my kids. Um, and so they, they're able to escalate with us. So those are my top three. All right, so my name is Dejali Goodwin and I've been with It Works For It to be two years next month. And I am currently a diamond and I am a full-time PhD student getting um, my doctorate in clinical psychology. I know, right, I'm a home stretch. <laughs> um, and so I do not have any children um, unless we count my puppy. So that's, my, I got a fur baby. Um, but basically a little bit about me is, um, even though I'm a full-time PhD student, I'm still very busy because I'm the assistant director of our outpatient clinic. I am the clinical psychology student lead of our student-run psychiatry clinic, and I'm also on the executive board for Race and Social Justice Committee on campus. So I'm super, super busy. So that's why the top things I implement, the first one is my schedule. I have to be super organized with my schedule. And I kind of break it down a few ways. Um, I start with what I call a semester plan. So I have fall, spring, and summer semesters. And I kind of break things down like, okay, research-wise, what are the big tasks I need to get done? Clin clinically, what are the big tasks I need to get done? And my business, what are the big things I'm trying to do? And then personally. Um, and then I break down the different aspects that go into those. And then I have something I call a brain dump. So my brain dump is actually a sticky note that I put on each week of my calendar. And it's a way for me to kind of take things that I know have to get done and put it on there. But you know how sometimes you're just going through the day and like, oh, I need to schedule an oil change. I just write in my brain dump so it's out of my head and I don't have to think about it. And every Sunday night before my week starts, I look at my brain dump, which is basically a list of to do of things that I have to do for that week. And I just put it into my calendar. And so I have my calendar that breaks every day up by 15 minute increments. And then so I would say, okay, like at this time, I'm going to call the dealership to schedule my oil change. At this time, I'm going to write the next section of my dissertation. At this time, I'm going to um, do some customer care. So I just kind of break everything down and I just put it on my brain dump so it's all there. Then Sunday nights, I have my meetings and I say, okay, now when am I going to do everything? So that's one. Um, the second thing is that it's very helpful for me to prep my posts in advance. So the night before, I'll get my pictures ready. I will have all of my posts in, the, in my notes in my phone, um, my stories ready to go. So when I'm walking in between class or in between meetings, it's copy paste. And I can get my posts up instead of having to stop and try to edit pictures and I run out of time or then I forget. So that's very helpful for me as well. And then the last thing is that since I spend a lot of time like in the clinic, and I don't get to be around campus as much. I carry a lot of product with me because I use it myself, but also because I do a lot of work at different coffee shops near campus or just in the community. So I have products like Keto Coffee, Keto Energy, Greens. I keep those in my backpack uh, along with Blitz cards and catalogs because as I start going to these cafes, I'm able to build those relationships in person that I would otherwise not be able to build. So I do a lot of my homework and schoolwork in cafes instead of coming home to do it. So that way I can, um, have an opportunity to just talk to other people about the business as well. So. <laughs> Rachel, it's Kamei, you want me to go? Okay, perfect. Hi guys, um, my name is Kamei Byers. I'm a Double Diamond distributor. I've been in the business now four and a half years. I am a wife of now 13 years, full-time teacher. I'm starting year 17. I've got two girls, eight and six. They were, what, two and three, four and two? Yeah, four and two when I started in the business. Um, and the top three things that I implement when school starts, because I'm a teacher, I'm an educator, um, I definitely talk loud and proud about the energy that I have. Everyone comes in moping and sad and long in the face. And I'm like, hey, everybody, how you doing? I've got that energy. And they look at me like, Kame, you suck. Where you get all this energy from? <laughs> like, you've got two kids. You've got a husband. You've got, you know, your kids are in various sports. Where do you get this energy from? And I will pull out my keto energy and say, here, you need to try one. <laughs> and then their life has changed forever. 
Um, I talk loud and proud about my health. Um, I am a huge proponent of sharing and bragging about the fact that I haven't missed school and my kids haven't missed school and I haven't taken a day off through them being sick in over three years. That's unprecedented, especially when my kids were in daycare and everyone was dropping like flies. And I would just say, yeah, you know, I don't have to worry about being sick. You know, I'm pouring in my grades and I'm drinking it in front of them. Um, because they'll say, well, what is that? Why is it green? And it looks like you are enjoying it. <laughs> so that alone is going to open up that door and that window for people um, to want to know, you know, what it is that I'm doing. Um, and I try to talk loud and proud about the patience that I have because I'm always being pulled in a million different directions. Confianza is my best friend. Confianza I have in the car. Sometimes I take it on my way to work because traffic here, I'm in the DC area. Traffic here is ridiculous. Um, and sometimes I can often be stressed before I even walk through my school doors. So I keep my confianza close, um, but I talk loud and proud about the products that I'm using as I'm walking through the door with my keto coffee and my greens, you know, my keto energy, um, now super greens that are coming in the mail to me and my confianza. Uh, number two, professional development. Because I have to utilize my drive to and from work, for me, it's about a 20 minute commute. I will use that time after I drop off my girls at school, from their school to my school, I'm listening. I might be listening to something that just allows me to be a better me and to be a better mom and have patience and love on myself. It could be a Zoom that I've missed um, due to my girls being at basketball camp or practice or something came up related to their sports, something that was out of kilter with my schedule that I need to get caught up on. I will use that time to and from work to then get caught up. Radio off, earbuds in, focus to and from, listening to professional development that way. Um, so either Zooms I've missed or YouTube videos that I need to hear. The third thing, I talk very loudly about how I am so busy and I'm able to make this business work for me. So often I hear people say, I'm too busy. I don't know how you do it. I can't do it. I don't have time. So I really try to show them in the ease of my schedule what I'm doing and the people I'm already speaking with about how they can work this business and it really maximize um, the time that they are already out and about and engaging with people. You might as well um, use, that use that as an opportunity to help them grow and be, them best selves, be their best selves. So those are my, my top three. Awesome. Okay, thank you. So we'll come back around to you. So for me, guys, my top three are, and I'll get more into this later because the questions that I, we have tonight, um, like Sam said, but my top three are um, prepping my um, son's meals on Sunday. So my son goes to a private school and there is no buy lunch at school. So he has to take his lunch to school every single day. So we prep, I prep lunches on Sunday. And what we do is we sit down and we discuss lunches and he takes the same thing for a month. Okay. And he's down for this. So, Hey, I'm down for it. So for an entire month, this month, he's taking salads, he's taking strawberries, he's taking crackers, cheese it and he wants his greens so period like i don't have to even think about it i make sure he has his lettuce i make sure his, his meat is cut up like i and then he has salad dressing in there and he makes his salad every single day his crackers are in little bags i do all those bag preps sometimes solicit my husband to come help me do these baggies or have um trey do it himself because he is older so prepping meals on sundays is like really really important for us because i don't have to deal like i get to have my mornings which we'll talk about that later um chore list so my son is 13, so it's different if you have like really small kids, but my son is 13. So our, his chore list is so important because his chore list includes um, his school clothes being out for the week and his laundry day. So he has a laundry day, like on Thursdays, he brings laundry upstairs and we wash it. And then he, we don't let him wash his clothes yet. He, we wash it and then we put it back in the basket and then he has to fold his clothes the same day and hang up all his school clothes. And we have bins. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before, but we went and bought him bins. You can get them at Walmart, you can get them Target, wherever, and the bins, they're folded up with all his, um, but he does it now. We used to have to do it, but it's folded with his underwear for the day, um, his undershirt, his socks for the day. So there is no looking for anything in the morning. He literally goes into his bin, pulls it out, and that's his Monday clothes. And we've implemented this a few years ago, and it completely changed our lives. And then the third one for us is a clear schedule on what's going on and what to do. So same as what most people said, like that schedule, I live 
by my schedule. And we have a family schedule as well as my personal schedule. Um, and my husband and I sit down and make sure that we're on the exact same page. So we know who's taking traits to school, who's taking Zayden to school, what's Zayden's morning routine, like who's doing what on, on given days. So there is no confusion. So we really like over communicate about what's going on. Um, on Mondays, I take Trey to school before because I have a Monday meeting. And he likes his mom to take him to school. But Tuesday through Friday, my husband takes him to school. So it's completely different. I know I don't have to worry about that at all, um, which kind of just frees up my morning so I can deal with Zayden, get him going, and get him off to school as well. So those are my top three. So moving on past that, so hopefully you have somebody who you can relate to um, based on if you're a student, you're a single mom, you're a teacher, a busy mom, or just busy in life altogether, or if you do this business full time, have younger kids or older kids. But the next question is, how do you create windows in your schedule? So, you know, sometimes you're like back to back to back to back and you have things going on. And I'm curious to know, how do you guys, how do you guys create your windows? So we'll go back to Sam. Okay, so this question at first I was like, ooh, like what? Like how do I create them? Um, but because school just started today, I kind of was able to have a light bulb moment. Um, so, and I found this out over the summer, so I don't have to work over the summer, and so my kids are able to be home with me. Um, and I got very lazy, if I can be honest. Um, so how Rachel had kind of hit it on uh, morning time is really important. So getting up super early. Um, because it gives me more time in the day and I'm not losing sleep. It's the weirdest thing, but like, okay, so let me try to backtrack. So getting up early in the morning and going to bed on time, like changes my life. <laughs> I did it yesterday and it was so good because this morning I was up on time. Um, so I get up by 5.30 every single morning. Um, how I do that is taking my products, collagen and new you at night right now because I'm waiting on the hydrate to come in the mail. Um, but that allows me to go to bed on time and then get up in the morning. So I get up at 5.30 and I have my personal time, I have my Jesus time. Um, I'm able to do also a power hour at 7 a.m. because my kids don't, thankfully, we're blessed. We don't have to be up till eight. So I'm able to have all of that time for me, right? Like I talked about like my self-care and how important that is. So it's important for me to be able to get all the good jujus and all of the good love um, from Jesus and then be able to go into my business. So I do an hour, um, a power hour every morning, um, which really allows me to like get my day in a roll. So we have something called PMF in, in the, uh, I don't know where Rachel got the thing from or if she made it, but it's post message follow-up. And so on that morning power hour, it is vital that I get my PMF done because it's, it's like my online business is like checked off for the day. Right. So I get my post up, I get my messaging. So I send, um, 25 new messages and then 50 follow-ups every morning. And it allows my business to kind of start that snowball process, right? So I don't have to worry as much. You know, of course, we post throughout the day, but it doesn't take as much effort. Um, so the morning time is super key, how I create windows, right? So that morning time. And then this is something I wrote down um, in regards to calendar, is I plan for uh, the wiggle room. So because, like... I work in after school. So me to think I'm going to get off at six o'clock every single day is silly. So, but I would pack my calendar in years past, like I was going to get off every day at six and not allow myself for the wiggle room. So it would just create that domino effect. And then my like mood is all jacked up. I'm, I'm stressed out because I'm running late and not hitting stuff on time. Um, so I have learned to add in wiggle room in everything that I do. Um, so just like with getting my kids ready for bed, like I add in that extra 15 minutes because you never know who's going to explode something or who's going to make a mess. Um, so adding in the wiggle room and getting up early and going to bed on time is how I create the excess in the schedule. All right. Well, with me, um, it's kind of similar where I feel like if you don't know what your schedule is and you can't create any open windows. And so that's why staying organized and keeping my calendar is very key. Um, and then kind of with the wiggle room, something that I have to be, because I have to train myself, discipline myself to be present in whatever it is that I'm doing. So if I'm working on a certain school assignment, that's what's getting my focus. Because if I'm over here on my phone, or if I try to stop and then do messages, then now that's taking up more time. Now I'm going over into time for something else. And then just the whole schedule is just thrown off. So just really focusing on being present on if I'm working my business at this time, I'm working my business. If I'm doing my schoolwork this assignment at this time, I'm being present doing that because it helps keep me from kind of tapping into other times. 
Um, and then another thing is I will break things down. So maybe, you know, a certain day I have to do a 15 minutes of my business here, then another 15 minutes there, then 30 minutes somewhere else to get an hour in because I have a hard time finding an hour chunk. So just being flexible and knowing that it doesn't have to be always a pretty hour, but just as long as I get that time in, even if I have to break it up in chunks. So those are the biggest ways that I create um, open windows in my schedule. Okay, y'all bear with me. We have some serious thunder coming through. <laughs> um, as a teacher and as a mom and as a girls in travel sports, multiple travel sports, um, it's essential that I live and die by my calendar. Um, creating that wiggle room is essential. I factor in commute time. I factor in um, pick up from school time. So I'm going to give you a quick um, shot here of what my calendar looks like. Let me see if I can turn this around. So this is the first day that I report back to school on Thursday the 22nd. And literally I have um, a calendar that is broken down by the hour. For me, my day starts before seven, but 7 a.m. is a good start time for a calendar. So I have here, um, I will do my product post in the morning. I've got my drive to work. I've got my block. I have lunch. So from lunch, I'll do a live. I'll talk about my super greens. I'll try to get in five hosted posts. I'll follow up with connect and I'll do a Facebook story and see if I can get a lifestyle post in <laughs> work, drive to Kent Gardens to get my daughters. The first day of my work day is their open house. So I've blocked off open house. We'll then drive to the library because at six, my daughter has practice. So I have things I can do between this time, drive to practice, things I'm doing while they're at practice. The schedule is clutch. So if you don't have a schedule that is roughly broken down in the time of blocks that allow you to actually write down what it is that you're going to do, you're going to feel totally lost. You're going to get through your whole day and wonder, oh my God, where did the time go? I did nothing for my business. Um, so creating that when, how do you create windows? You have to write it out. You don't know where your windows are until you see it on paper. Um, so I will break up my six list, as Deja Lee said. Um, I will say, okay, I can get these two things done here. I can get this one done here. I can squeeze in this here. And I, and I get it done that way. So break down your six list. If you don't have a six list, if you don't know what a six list is, it is six things that you will commit to do with your business that day. And you can feel like you have been a productive <laughs> contributing member to your business when you get when you've gotten those six things done so I'll do that um, during my lunch hour because I do have time where it is just for me and I can do what I want sometimes I go live from my classroom sometimes I will do three-way calls during my lunch hour so that's something that I make available for me um, but having that schedule and knowing what it is that I have planned to do is super important. And at night, I look at what I have going the next day because that, that will allow me to say, okay, well, well, this schedule got practice or this we have to add in. It's pretty unrealistic for me and the way my schedule works is to plan everything out from Sunday to Sunday because it's going to change. There's going to be something that's going to pop up that wasn't originally in the plans to do that you accommodate. And you make it work because you go with the flow. Um, wiggle room and being flexible, having confianza on deck when things just seem to all blow up and smoke because you know at the end of the day, you are getting an opportunity to work on your dream. So if one day totally goes to the, <laughs> to the crapper, it's okay. You can get back on track the, the next day. So it's nice to, to know that if you do create a schedule, um, you can establish some really good habits that are good for you, that are good for your family. Um, Similar to what Rachel said, I also have schedules. Um, I actually call it a morning routine and an evening routine for my daughters that we are, I am very, very much a stickler to. So when I know and I send them to their room and I'm saying, go do your evening routine, they know what that is. They're leaving me alone. And there's some things that I can get done in that block of time that they're prepping and getting ready for bed before I have to actually turn out the lights. I like that. Okay, so myself, um, my windows, how do I create windows in my schedule? So like Sam said, it's so funny because they're so redundant, even though we have such different walks of life. So me, I wake up an hour to an hour and a half before my family. Um, so I'm saving Sam, my time is 5.30. Um, of course, give or take, um, most of the time it's not because I don't have, I, getting up is that important to me. So I'm willing to be tired then not be up and get my cup filled before my family wakes up. Like I am willing. 
Um, so getting up before my family, bedtime for me and my kids. So my son, you, you guys are gonna, if you might see him come in here and say goodnight to me. And he's 13, he's about to be 13 and he goes to bed at nine. Why? Because he gets up at 6.30. Like, and he gets himself up at 6.30. I shouldn't have to walk downstairs and wake him up. So just implementing those habits and then normally Zay gets up about 7.30. So bedtime's for myself and, my, and I utilize, and I'm gonna talk about this later, but I utilize the do not disturb function on my phone so that I'm not getting a million notifications. So if you have, you can do it on an iPhone and an Android. You can create a bedtime on your phone. Now, if you're somebody who stays up all night because you're single and you can do that, that's fine. But if you have kids, you need to go to bed unless you're working a full-time job and that's your window. If that's your window, that's your window. But for myself, I need to go to bed because I need to be able to get up, be able to function, have my time. And you know what's so crazy, guys? I was not. A morning person I used to tell my team and they can be witnesses on here that it just it's just not gonna happen like <laughs> I'll see you guys at like 9 10 o'clock like it's just it was real life I stayed up till 1 2 o'clock in the morning sending messages and then I realized you don't have to do this anymore like you can be a regular person and go to bed at night like I used to work midnight at one point in my life and I was like I can be a normal person and so I decided to do normal people things so I could function during the day for my family so Bedtime for myself and I. I have a lunch time with my husband and I, so we work that window. Y'all don't make no funny comments about my lunch time. So I do block off times <laughs> about, like I block off times in my schedule, just like you saw in, on Kamei's schedule. Like they, my team knows around 12, 12.30 to 1.30, 2 o'clock, you won't hear from me. My phone actually goes on do not disturb and I enjoy my husband because I am home full time and I have I have the ability to have lunch with my husband during the middle of the day and so we do that. We have that time whether we're watching TV or just <laughs> enjoying ourselves. I'm not you guys. Do not disturb button on my phone and allow myself to give attention to what I'm doing. So similar to what they, that Deja Lee said, I have to be present and so I need to, from, if I have a one-to-one -one with somebody or if I have a consultation with a customer or whatever my phone is not going off my phone is not ringing I have two phones um, but they will never ring like I, my phone will be on do not disturb and you will have my attention so even right now you guys will not hear my phone buzzing or anything like that because I, my phone is on do not disturb because I am in this meeting I'm not in my phone sending messages while I'm in this meeting I'm in this meeting if it's time for my kids I'm with my kids my phone is on do not disturb so then it also creates boundaries for me and as I create these boundaries it makes me have to do my like you don't when I get up in the morning like Sam says she does her 7 out 7 a.m. power hour I have to do a 7 a.m. power hour because I'm putting my phone away when I go to the gym there is no um, I'm sending a million messages while I'm working out. I'm working out. And y'all know in real life, which is so funny, I just heard this recently. If you're really working out, you can't talk to somebody on the phone. You can't send messages. So stop, stop skeeting your workout and actually work out for an hour. And then you can go back and send your messages. And then you'll be like, well, why am I still fat? And why is there no abs? And it's because you don't work out for real because you're on your phone. So set those times and those blocks. Like it's so important for me, um, for sure. Yeah, so, oh, he loves, oh, he loves, oh, I'm always with my husband. And you know what, You that's a whole nother question. I'm gonna get to that at the end, because that is a great question, and I'll answer that at the end. All right, so number four, I'm gonna write it down as soon as I hand off this next question. So what are the top top habits? So this is a big one, um, and hopefully you guys, and if, if, it's, if it's redundant, I won't even share mine, but what habits, what are the top habits that allow you to be able to flourish and actually be productive. So like E-suite productive. What are those top habits that help you flourish in your business? I'm gonna hand it back to Sam. Okay, um, so top habits is the first thing, especially when school starts, um, is my products. So I have to take my products, otherwise my energy is low. I'm just droggy, right? Like. I go away for two months over the summer and if I come back in August and I'm fatter than I was when I left, like that doesn't make any sense for the business I do, right? Like, so just staying on my products because honestly, like I said, I wouldn't be able to get up in the morning. I wouldn't be able to stay at the high energy level that um, I feel like I actually need to be at. So taking my products um, and then it also helps build your business because you're constantly having something to post about so you have a product in your hand. Um, my schedule so sticking to my schedule 
Um, I know Kimmy had hit on it really shortly. Um, just like, you know, like if your day falls apart, like, okay, like we have grace and then you get back into it the next day. Um, but like sticking to the schedule, like today when we got home, we have an hour and a half to get dinner, lunches packed, baths, and then they're in bed by eight. Um, and then they have to be asleep by nine. They're kind of rambunctious right now, but sticking to that schedule, I almost gave in on the very first day and I was like, no, because when you give in one day, it's like a, a train, right? Like it's like a train wreck, like the next day is going to go in and then it's just a spiral and out of control. So sticking to the schedule regardless, um, she already talked about it. Sorry. Um, do not disturb on your phone. So that is live. I do have the bedtime app uh, feature set up on mine as well. So it does turn off. Um, but being using do not disturb when I'm having one of those days where I just feel off or I just can't get it together. Um, using do not disturb to not allow my my nerves to go through the roof. Um, so because I, I live with just two kids and then I also work with children, um, the do not disturb feature throughout the year um, really just lessens my like anxiety about buzzing and beeping and these messages coming through and feeling anxious in the moment like oh my god like I need to respond all these people are responding back um, I actually will walk around a lot about well, with my phone on do not disturb so like if like I'll just use it throughout the day it doesn't even have to be nighttime um, if I just feel off about something and then also alarms so when we read high performance habits he had us create a lot of alarms inside of our phone to remind us of different things and so one thing when I actually created my schedule for the month of August I went through my phone and I created a bunch of schedules that relate to the time frames um, because something we had talked about with Rachel at Monday meetup um, was not always having our phones in our hands because if you can't live without it, like there's there's a problem, like there's there's something off if you feel like you can't live without your phone by your side. Um, and I'm a person who I don't have a lot of clocks. So putting on a watch or I also, on top of the watch, I also put um, alarms in my phone. So I can step away from my phone and not be worried that I'm going to miss the next thing that I have to do because an alarm will go off on my phone. Even if my phone is on not, do not disturb, the alarms still go off. Um, so like, for example, like when I get up and I'm in my Jesus time, I don't have to keep looking at the clock because an alarm goes off at 658 to let me know, like, Hey, it's time to get to work. You're going to be awesome. Um, and then again, another one goes off at eight o'clock. So even when I'm focusing on my power hour, I don't have to keep checking to see what time it is, um, in between the tasks. So the alarms do not disturb your schedule, of course, and then my products are my top habits to make it through. Um, for me, since I am a student and um, I have a lot of things <laughs> that come up, um, like big tests and working on my dissertation and like this time last year, I had like a week long of exams and, you know, the big exams to determine if I get to keep going to my, my program. It's um, high communication with my team, both my uplines and my downlines. And that comes in handy where it's just like, hey, I have a newbie who would like to do a three-way call, but I'm going to be in class and that's the only time they can do it. And so be, me having that high communication with my upline since we all kind of work together um, to make sure that they could assist in that or just to let them know like, hey, if you try to contact me at this time, I will be in class or I have a test this day. Um, so it's never a wondering like, where are you at? What are you doing? Um, and things like that. Um, and another thing is I don't procrastinate on my schoolwork. So that way it doesn't take up my business time. Because if I procrastinate on my schoolwork and now it's two days before a big assignment is due, I'm only going to have time to focus on that. My business is going to go out the window. So I make sure I get I get my school assignments, I get them done weeks, weeks in advance if I can. So I try to knock those out as soon as I can. Like I'm the person that when the first day of the semester comes and it's a syllabus, I'm like, okay, when can I start doing all this stuff? So that way I can get it done. So that way um, I don't end up losing time with my business. And then um, the other thing is like what we just talked about before, my top habits are just making sure that I have my notes set up and then I have like my six list um, that includes my posting, my message, my uh, follow-ups, my development. Like I keep a list in there like this, how many numbers, how many messages I'm sending out today, this, how many follow-ups I'm doing. And I keep track of it and I count it. So as I'm going through the day, it's like, okay, my goal is 50 today and I got 20 in the morning and I got another 20 at lunch. I'm keeping up with exactly how many it is until I hit that number or exceed it. So I kind of keep notes of that in my calendar or in my notes section as I keep going. So just so I can make sure I hold myself accountable. 
So the top habits that allow me to flourish, my schedule, I live and die by it. Um, I have to have it and I follow it. Time management is going to be huge for those of us that are incredibly busy. You're going to feel overwhelmed. You're going to feel like this isn't for you unless you can tell your time where to go. Um, so making a schedule and sticking to it is something that is going to save your sanity. <laughs> uh, for me as a teacher, using my products in public, I use them in front of my students. I use them in front of my principal. I use them in parent meetings. I've got my little um, bag if the teacher's kind of dragging and I'm like, hey, I've got some coffee. Would you like to try some? Yes, you're getting my keto coffee and my chocolate greens. Like that's just what you're getting from me. So I have my products. I use them in public. We had that really cool, I don't know if some of you still have it, it was the charger that said um, it works. Um, and I would bring that charger to work during our orientation days because we would have teachers from various buildings. And I had literally had someone say, what works? Better believe I was talking to her a little bit later. And she became a loyal customer. So using your products and sharing them, blitzing is something that I'm, I'm big with. I was at the park with my girls and one of their soccer friends today, blitz two moms at the park got a blitz. You have to be willing to share what you have because it's amazing. Um, I have what I call quickies. <laughs> and my quickies are in my notes section of quick things that when time gets away from me, when wiggle room has wiggled away, what is something I can quickly go to? It already has, you know, it already has the post. It already has an image to go with it. It's literally a copy and a paste done, put my phone back away. So that might be something that I have if there's an impromptu um, meeting that I have to attend, if I'm filling in for someone else and my lunch hour gets taken away, what's something that I can keep in the flow? But it's literally in my notes, full. in my notes, it's called quickies. Um, it might be a lifestyle post, it might be a business post, it might be a, a product post, but is it going to be something that's already organized, that doesn't take any thinking, that I can literally copy, paste, post, and put my phone away? Because as a teacher, I just can't have my phone out all day. Um, uh, what else makes me flourish and be, and be productive? New you and confianza at night. If you're not on that, um, that, that combo, <laughs> you're missing out on some really good sleep. Um, it helps you put your mind at ease. It allows you to restart and be ready to go for the next day. So those are my top tips. So that's good because somebody actually just asked me, um, and I'll just interject real quick. I know we have another thing to get to, but they just asked, what's the difference between taking Confianza and New Year, which is what I used to take, opposed to what I take now? Um, and since you haven't switched, Kame, but Sam has, I'm pregnant, so it's a little different for me, but I take collagen, hydrate, um, and probiotics at night. I don't take New Year right now because I am pregnant. Um, but I guess, Sam, maybe you can speak on it real quick since somebody else has asked that. So one of the biggest things I have noticed, the difference I would say between New York and collagen. Okay. Um, so when I, when I would fall off of New You, I would have to almost slowly put myself back into it. Um, and there was a time frame that I had to be within. Um, so the New You, like I would start to have really vivid um, dreams. And so it was more of a thing of where, like, I had to take my new you at least an hour before I went to bed. Um, and I had to actually down it from two to one when I would get back into it. So that the new you was less, would you say, like giving with a, a, a bad consistency wrap, um, where the collagen, it's like, if you take it, you're good. It doesn't matter. If you don't take it, you're tired, but you at least don't have the, the offset of when you get back into it. Um, so that's one of the biggest things. I do prefer to take them together. Um, but yes, I would prefer to drink it over take a pill because especially at night, I don't know, like if it's just because we're tired and it's just like taking a pill. Um, I prefer the ease of drinking it versus having to take the pill, but I do take them together. Um, but yeah, that's my biggest thing. But I haven't been able to try the hydrate. I ordered it last month, so I'm waiting for it to come in. I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, that's the biggest thing that I've noticed with them. Awesome. So I know I switched a while ago and I, and I can say that I didn't even, I know, I guess I didn't even think about it, but the dreams are not there. Um, goodness. I don't know if no, you just took me too deep, but, but the, the bad dream, I do dream, but not the freaky stuff. Like anyways, if you have to take new you at night, you probably know what I'm talking about. Just, it, it can, 
we know that. So my answer to this question is what Sam said, taking my products, oh my gosh. So somebody just asked what products I take. Taking my products is essential. And I almost am embarrassed to say that I was an It Works distributor when I was pregnant with Zayden because I was fat and just off the chain. But now, listen, <laughs> out here living my best life, okay? So no, I take, um, I mean, give you guys, I'm, I'm 30, 32 weeks pregnant. I take the, um, so I do the Just Celery Challenge and I just got back on it. And I'm gonna be very honest with you guys in this space. I stopped taking it. I did a 10 day challenge with my husband and I stopped taking it because I started getting constipated. And God knows constipation with anybody is just not what's up, but constipation with a pregnant woman makes you want to throw stuff and just lose your mind. So I was like, okay, I'm stopping. Like this just celery has got to go because I was going like twice in the morning, two months or, and I was real regular. And I was like, this is not working out for me, but my energy dropped. Like, and it was crazy because, um, I, my energy was okay before just celery, but I, it, with just celery, it gave me a boost in energy. Like it, it took my energy to another place. And so I was like, you know what? I got to figure this out. And I realized that I was not drinking as much water as I should. And I actually drink a lot of water, but I was not hydrating my body the way that I should have been. So I had to make sure that if I was going to do the Just Celery, I had to increase my water intake. So I do the Just Celery in the morning. Then I have my coffee with the chocolate greens. The reason why I do the chocolate greens now is because I want to get at least one serving of greens in in the morning. Because if I forget it in the afternoon, I don't want to just not take my greens because of what it does for my body. So I do the, the coffee and chocolate greens. And then I do intermittent fast unless I want to snack. I'm, it's not the law, but I don't need to eat. Like after I have the coffee, it's not like I need to eat. So I eat normally around like noon. Um, and I do a fasted workout too, guys, and I don't die and I'm still healthy and all that jazz. So um, you don't have to be fat and obese if you're pregnant. Like I had to teach myself that because I just felt like I had to eat everything underneath the sun. But keto coffee does help with that big time. So I do, I, and around noon time, I might have my greens, um, another dose of greens, maybe the berry greens. I've always been probably since I started this business on a double dose of greens, it's just my thing. Um, it, it helped me get off of soda. It helped me get off of so many different bad habits. And so I do like the boost that greens gives me. Um, I do use the cleanse. I actually am just uh, finished my second bottle. I did get this stuff approved from my, my midwife. So if you have any concerns, please take it to your doctor. Don't say Rachel said. Um, <laughs> I use the, the cleanse. Um, I use Probiotics are probiotics are the bomb for pregnant women. Um, for me, I use two broke probiotics around this time where I'm 32 weeks because of the G GBS. Yep, the GBS strep. Um, I need to make sure that my body is free of the bacteria, and our probiotic is the bomb. It's legit. So around now, I start taking two probiotics a day. And with Zayden, this did work because with my first son, I was positive. Zayden, I was negative, and I will, God willing, be negative again um, this time because of our probiotics. I take hydrate. I take collagen. I do that hydrate and collagen um, mix at night. It helps improve the quality of my sleep like never before. I do do the entire skincare line. I use the fine and gel on my thighs. I use the stretch mark cream on my stomach. Um, I use, I will use hair, skin, and nails. I don't need to right now because of all the other products that, especially the collagen, um, that is just enhancing to my body. If I feel like using the hair, skin, and nails, I will, but my hair is like legit off the chain from the collagen already. So I don't, um, feel it necessary to use, but I, I will use that. Um, and I think that's about it. The only thing that's just off limits for me right now is the TFX and the, um, the new you TFX only because I don't need to lose weight. If I need to lose weight, I would probably take it into my doctor and say, Hey, like, can I use this? Um, but the products keep me alive, guys. The products allow me to thrive. The products is how I got through my first trimester. I was so thirsty that I would drink about four hydrates a day. Um, and I was salty when they went on back order. And so I decided I was never going to have that experience in my life again. I was never going to be out of coffee again. And so I always make sure I order enough for me and my husband and for samples. <laughs> so I'm always making sure that I'm, I'm stocked up on product. I don't run out of product because there never will be a day that I don't have my coffee. Like, that's just not going to happen. There also will never be a day that I don't, um, I don't have the ability to give out a sample. Like I need to be able to give out my samples as well. So, um, I don't do keto energy and coffee in the same day. So if I want keto energy, I could, because of the, the, um, the caffeine, 
that's in it, I have to choose between caffeine and keto energy. And I'm never not, I mean, not caffeine, keto coffee or keto energy. And I'm never not going to have my coffee. So keto energy is kind of just on the back burner right now until after I have the baby. Um, but you can, I can have it. Um, I just would rather have the coffee than the keto energy. So um, I, I both. Um, it depends. I, normally, I don't give out samples, but if I'm getting something in exchange or I feel like that's a great potential, I will give out samples. Okay, so my other top habits is, guys, I go to bed at night. Like, that's not a game. They, I'm going to bed. I will literally leave my phone and go and lay down and put on my Hypno Babies, shout out to Hypno Babies, or a sermon or something to listen to and clear my mind and go to bed. Um, I get up before my family, so that's another top habit. And then the other top habit is my do not disturb um, and allow myself to give attention. Did I say that? Yep. Okay, so what did you guys' schedule look like? And Kamei already shared. Okay. Yep, let's, yep. Go ahead. Okay, so I am, I love to be extra. So I actually one day got inside of Word because I could never find a calendar that I actually liked. It never started early enough and it never went late enough. Um, now that I've implemented um, a bedtime, I don't actually need it as late it goes. But my calendar actually starts at 5 a.m. and goes till 11.30 or midnight. Um, it's broke up into 30-minute time slots. And then it has all this extra sauce on the side. Um, so my day, of course, like, it's a goal to wake up. I'm, I'm pushing towards 5 right now. We're hitting 5.30. Um, wake up, right? So then I have my hour and a half um, where I'm able to get, like, my good just celery in and get it all washed through. Um, and the one thing I've actually started to do recently was right when my alarm goes off at 6.58, right before I go into my power hour, I actually run downstairs and switch the laundry. So that way I'm doing a load of laundry every single day and it's life-changing um, because that was one of the things I remember Rachel said. <laughs> she was like, your kids don't need more than three uniforms. You're just dirty and don't do your laundry. And I was like, oh my God, I was a person who would rack up two weeks worth of clothes for them because I knew I wasn't going to do laundry. Oh, Jesus. Um, so we went down to seven uniforms this year. Um, and I just do a load of laundry every morning. So it, but it's really been a big change because, um, and that was one of the things I have on here is the cleaning piece is really big for me. Um, as a single mom, right? Like there's nobody else that's going to pick up around the house. And so it was like stuff would start to pile up because I never put cleaning as a priority inside of my schedule. And so it was like kind of a last ditch effort. And then it would be like month in, I'd be stressed out. There'd be stuff stinking and it would just like my whole world would fall apart. And so I have pushed myself. And so, like I said, the laundry thing in the morning was something new. Um, I've pushed myself to, to make cleaning a, now a habit in, inside of my daily schedule. Um, last year, last school year was actually when we started um, making a cleaning day. So that was something I know earlier we talked about the family schedule. So I wanted to give you guys a drastic so this is our family calendar. It's actually a poster board that I laminated. And then, so that way we can create the whole month on it. Um, and it's dry erase markers. So this month, it was so exciting. So my son actually helped me with it, my youngest one. Um, and so we have like the first day on there and then we have our days of the week. So for example, on Monday nights, it's our gym night. So they, we found a gym. They actually love the kids area. So every Monday night after we get out of my job, We'll go to the gym and they'll be able to play while I'm there. On Tuesdays, it's Dante's pick. So that, that's my oldest son. So every Tuesday, when we have our hour and a half after we get home, he gets to decide what we get to do. So that way, he really gets to feel like we do something fun. Because my kids in the past, when I've allowed the business to run me instead of like me running my business, um, my kids have missed out on things and they felt neglected. So they each get their own night now where they get to pick an activity that we get to do. Um, I have, so one night a week, normally we're out at a teammate's place doing whatever. So that's in here as well. Um, and then my youngest gets to pick a night. Friday nights is our cleaning night and that will rotate every single month. So like say next month, we decided that like, look, we never really cleaned on Friday. So we need to move it to another day. Um, it's, we're able to do that, but it has big things on it. So like if we have, we have an event coming up on a Saturday over here. Um, so that's on the calendar. So they know, hey, when Saturday gets here, mom is going to make us go sell some wraps. Um, so they're already pre-prepared for it. So I don't have any habits that I run into or any type of complaining issues. 
um, and then giving them those days to be able to pick what we do so we can go to the library or to the park um, or we can just if they want me to play video games I give them that time um, again put my phone on do not disturb so I'm not distracted because you know when you hear the beeping and the clinking going off it's very difficult um, if you're not trained well to not look or not at least grab your phone to see who messaged you or who wants your intention. Um, so I have cleaning, like I said, worked into my schedule. Kids choice, working out um, is something I'm working in this year. So finding the space for that to go inside of my schedule. Um, I'm up to three days a week right now, so that's amazing. So like that one night I'll go with the kids and then the other two times I'm able to go during the day. I also upped their bedtime this year, which has been a big change. Um, so I used to, my kids didn't lay down until nine o'clock because I was on like zipping around for the business from like eight to nine. And I realized that if I just put them to bed earlier, I could have a solid hour from nine to 10 without them in my ear and bugging me and actually being able to give my full attention, be present and actually be able to get something done. Um, so it's, they're upping that bedtime one. It's like was recommended by their doctor anyways. Um, and two, it also helps me. So it helps them be fully prepared and fully ready. My son got up at like seven o'clock this morning without an alarm. Um, so it's just putting them to bed early. Lavender oil, if you have anybody who has difficulty falling asleep. Um, so yeah, so I go to school for, or I go to after school. So power hour in the morning, get my, give my kids two hours to get to school and then me to get back home. Um, I either work out or I start to work on PD and SD. So like reading or anything like that. Um, eat lunch and then I go into work for six hours and then like I said we come home it's dinner bath time backpacks all of that good stuff um, and then like I said they're in bed by nine so I do um, my power from nine to ten and then I'm in bed so that's my schedule that's not confusing all right so um, my schedule I'm, I'm like Sam and Rachel where I start my mornings at 5 30 as well then I start with my personal development and spiritual development and kind of just depending upon the day of the week, I may uh, do a gym in the morning uh, because most of the time my school day starts around 9 or 9.30 and it typically goes to 7 or 8 p.m. on most days um, after seeing clients and having meetings and everything of that nature. So I guess I can show my schedule just a little bit of what I mean by like my brain dump. So it's like I have my sticky notes and there'll be my brain dumps with all the things I kind of just need to get done for this week. And then you can see, I don't know, can y'all see it? I don't know, see it. Where I schedule things in, in those 15 minute increments as well. And so with the, um, with the new semester coming up, I will have like each week, I will automatically put in like I'm in this certain class at this time. I am at my placement at the autism clinic at this time. So I put those things that are constant in first and then I schedule everything around it. Um, and that's what keeps me keeps me sane really is just having this schedule, having this planner there. Um, because like I said, most days I'm starting around 9 a.m. and going till 7 or 8 p.m. Um, just with school stuff alone. So being able to find those breaks. Um, in there and then like I said using that brain dump um, is what helps me the most. Um, so this is Kamei. I showed you my calendar that I go through. Um, I, don't, I don't feel I have anything more to share about it but I think whatever calendar you do choose to get, get one that is broken down um, by the half hour. I think that's really essential. I typically get mine from like Office Max or something. Nothing fancy, um, but actually utilizing each of the parts and penciling in what it is that you're going to do. Um, if you need the satisfaction of check marking it or having your schedule be electronic, do that. But sometimes it's difficult when your phone should be away to pull it out and check your schedule. Um, so I like my paper calendar. Um, I like to be able to look forward. Um, my husband and I talk every Sunday about what major things are coming up in the calendar that, that I need to get in. Um, I think the hardest thing for me is the weekends when I know that my daughters have competitions, but I don't know the time until it gets a little closer. So that for me impacts my um, vendor events or things like that. Um, and only now is it becoming a bigger issue because I now have two kids in travel sports and they are not on the same travel team. Um, one is a 2010 and one is a 2011 and they have totally different schedules. Um, so I may have to start getting a little creative with who's going to take who. Does a babysitter need to take them? Do, do I need to do a carpool? 
probably what we'll start instituting is that carpool function so that I can still go to my vendor events, but still be able to check in with my husband and the girls who are at, you know, that are on the field to say, you know, mommy loves you. You know, I'm doing my it works thing. My daughter will probably be more upset that she's not with me <laughs> showing people that she drinks the greens. <laughs> nice i like that that's, that's actually a good idea and woo kudos to you so for me guys my schedule is um it really varies based on the day kind of like sam said um but typically wake up at 5 30 i have my long time again what um what deja said whatever i said the personal and spiritual development of course for me my spiritual development more so um i normally do my personal development a little later on in the day but at seven o'clock typically sometimes around like 7 30 i will start with my business stuff so i will open up my messages i will open up my facebook I, that's when i make my and my phone is still on do not disturb sometimes i leave my phone off and in my room and i'm just working from my ipad and i'll start replying to messages on facebook or um, Instagram messages or things like that start replying to people who I may have messages from the night before and then I'll, I'll at least get my goal is to at least get up one post and then I may go ahead and edit the pictures for my day so I can be prepared um, I might even go ahead like Sam said and, and start my PMF like do my messages and my follow-ups because follow-ups are normally very very easy to get done for the day whether it's a host to post that I did from the night before just going through and following up with those people that I've talked to this week um, and seeing if they're ready to go ahead and get going um, then from there, about 8 o'clock, I'll start picking up around my house, depending on the day. So I may put up the dishes if my, hus my husband washes the dishes. Shout out to my husband. So I'll put them away. Um, I may pick up. I do have a two-year-old, so there will be stuff all over my house. I may get out the vacuum cleaner and things like that, straighten up my couch area because that might be a hot mess. Like there's no telling when you have a two-year-old around your house. And so I'll just pick up around my house. Now I'm going to tell you guys. Um, well, I'll finish this and I'll tell you guys this. So 9 o'clock, Zayden goes to school. So my husband and I, we both take Zayden to school and then we go to the gym and I have a workout class. This has changed my life. Like actually going to classes and have, it makes me stick to a specific schedule. So I, on certain days, and it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I have a class at 9 or 9.30. And so we drop off Zayden at school and then I have my workout class from this certain time. And then I give myself a 30 minute grace, kind of like Sam said, and then I'll have a meeting at 11, 1130. And then around 1230 is where I shut everything down. And that is lunchtime with my husband. Um, so then I have um, lunchtime with him and then I'll have I'll have meetings when he go gets the kids. So we have this arrangement communication like Kame just talked about. My husband, go, he likes it. Like this is what he desires to do. He's a full-time dad. Um, my husband is a basketball coach, so it will change when basketball season rolls around. So we'll have a totally different schedule. So he enjoys it now. And so he not only likes to take our kids to school, but he likes to pick them up because when basketball starts, he's not able to do that. So he will go and get the boys from school. They get done at two. 2.30 and then Trey is done at 3 and in that time I stay home and that is when I have time to have possible meetings or I can get on and finish out my PMF or read a book or just whatever it is that I desire to do have some alone time and get my mind together journal or whatever um, before the kids get home and then my lunches and dinners are normally already prepared but I'll have my family time so like tonight I, I was not my phone was just, it didn't matter from like four to when I hopped on this meeting, I was able to just enjoy my kids or again, have more alone time <laughs> or cook dinner or whatever, because I know I've gotten so much done already for the day and I don't schedule meetings in between, in between time unless something is just that imperative. And then of course, bedtime. So that's what my schedule looks like. I, I do want to tell you guys this though, the habits that you instill in your life if you instill them now, they don't stop just because school goes out, okay? This is like my number one tip, and I'll ask the other ladies if they have anything else to share. My number one tip to you is that if you can't let your routine lapse just because your kids aren't in school. So my son, my kids still have bedtimes, even though they're not in school. Even in the summertime, when even when my son does not have anything to do at all at 12, he goes to bed. There is no staying up all night. There is no watching TV all night. There is no YouTube all night. Like, you're going to bed. I don't even want to think, let him think that these habits are okay. We might, you know, there's some days that there's, you know, that we'll stay up and maybe watch a movie together. But he knows we go to bed. I 
I still cook dinner. Um, one big tip that I have, guys, if you haven't bought containers off of Amazon or you can get them from the grocery store or wherever, you buy these containers. And when I cook dinner, I cook dinner and then I put them in containers. And then my family has food to eat for the entire week. So let's just say I make spaghetti and corn. I make enough to where I can throw them in the containers. And so my son does not ask me what's for dinner. He goes in there and he gets a meal because dinner's already prepared for the week. Um, and I cook the same things, guys. I do not get spicy and razzy-dazzy. Like, that's not what I do. And guess what? I have three boys in my house, and maybe that's just me. But they don't care. They actually really love it. Um, if they want something special, they will say, hey, like, mom, can you make this? And then I'll say, okay, I'll make this, and I'll just throw it into the rotation. But I'm going to go ahead and just make these things so I don't have to think about it, and it's stuff that's already done, so I don't have to worry about dinner at night. I don't have to worry about things. My husband loves giving our two-year-old a bath. I have an amazing husband, so if you have a spouse, it's different. Like I said, I'm coming from the approach of a full-time family in this business, and so I do have somebody who is holding me down. Even right now, you see that my kids have not been in here tonight praise jesus if this was basketball season it would not be like this so i'm taking advantage of it while i can um so bedtime um order order in my house period and then of course the dinners it just changed everything you need to implement that all year long not just don't stop being lazy we get up in the summers still have your your jesus time or your alone time whatever you call it in the morning don't stop doing that stuff just because you're on vacation or just because you have something going on and for me i don't know i'm going to say this like we implement something on our team called the sabbath and so we have a whole day where we do nothing because God created this earth in six days and on the seventh day he rested. And so we decide that we decided that God can do more in one day than we can do in seven. So we allow ourselves to have that day. And so we're guilt free for an entire day. We get to spend time with our family. Do not disturb. We do not do social media at all. And so our family completely gets us. And so we spend the time that we need to having these habits when it comes to our business, which allows things to flourish and go to the next level. So um, Deja, did you, Sam, did you have anything else that you'd like to share? So my comment, because when we were talking about the schedule afterwards, I thought about it um, was the Sabbath and that was, you just talked about it, um, but it has been life changing. And as well as, as far as my kids are concerned, um, it's just one day where they get all of me. Um, and so they really appreciate it. And so as a single parent, it's really nice to, to be able to be really disconnected um, from the device, right? So from the cell phone. And so it, it makes me work harder. Um, throughout the week. So I'm able to give more energy and more focus and more drive. And I'm okay with doing an event all day on Saturday because I know tomorrow I get to do absolutely nothing. Um, and so that, that has been very, very big. Um, and honestly changes a lot of my, it changed my whole week, just putting that one day in there. So yes, that's it. Um, and something for me that I want to add is like mindset is everything. So when that comes to school, when that comes to my business, all the time I get people like, how come you never seen stress? Or how come you're so chill? Or how come, you know, like, especially in my program, since it's such a rigorous program, people are like, you're always just like on top of things. And I tell them because it's like, I know that everything will work out. That's my thing. Everything will work out. Um, so when it comes to school, when it comes to business, like I get to decide how my day will go based upon what my mindset is. So I determine that every day when I wake up that I'm going to have a good day and then no matter what comes at me I will figure it out and it will be okay so I think that mindset is very very key um just so you can be successful in what you're doing while juggling so many different things <laughs> I was thinking of my things to share and I kind of giggled to myself because my husband's gonna kill me when I share one of these but the first thing I wanted to share is definitely share your authentic self um, so for me, that's my kids interrupting my lives. That's my girls jumping in and showing how they want to make, how they show people how they make and drink their greens. Um, you know, show your family's idiosyncrasies because we all have them. When you try to show this, this picture perfect cookie cutter life, people automatically disqualify themselves because they believe that they don't fit that mold. So show your authentic self, show the frustration, show the, the silliness, show the craziness, whatever that is, because that is going to allow them to connect to you and that will allow you to attract your tribe. The second thing I wanted to share is that those of you with spouses, 
<laughs> those of you with spouses, when you handle your business at home and you are on your phone or you're away from whatever you need to do, you're going to get so much more support. So love on your spouse. Um, take some time to make sure that you are taking care of your spouse in all the facets of, of what that includes. <laughs> and I'm going to leave that right there. <laughs> so when you, when you are able to really love on your spouse and, and show them that you appreciate the support that they give you, um, you know, it's reciprocal. So, you know, they may be a little frustrated that you're on your phone when, you know, they'd rather, rather be cuddled up with you, but when you go and cuddle up, go and cuddle up and then get back to work. <laughs> okay. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I love that. Like, seriously, like, it's so important that you block off that time, guys. It's the same thing with your kids. It's not just your spouse, but it's your kids as well. Block that small, like I'm telling you, it will change. You will, you will not feel like you're running around with your head cut off. You will literally feel so much better. So I would say this and we're hop off here. Thank you guys so much for hanging with us five minutes over, but go get a calendar like tomorrow. If you, you can get them from Target, you can get them from Office Max. Um, I always get my, I don't, oh, I wanted to show you guys. So this is my calendar. I do have an iPad upgraded my life. And so this was one that I bought. And so this is an example. <laughs> so funny, y'all see that lunch in red. But this is an example of one of my schedules. Um, and it normally is, it might even be fuller than this because I may have the meals that I'm cooking or whatever. But I set my intentions, I write my affirmations at the top. And then um, I also have on here my full out schedule. And I won't, so like this is my entire schedule with everything on it, like doctor's appointments, everything on it. Um, which just helps me stay organized. So go get a schedule tomorrow, like order the Amazon Prime, like go get it and make sure it's hourly so that you're able to tell every single hour of your day where to go is so important. Like it is a game changer to be able to tell your time where to go. And then for me, I do not do any, I will never set anything with anybody until I look at my calendar. So stop saying yes to stuff before you look at your calendar and take your calendar everywhere that you go. Make that a habit. It stays in my bag. It stays in my purse, wherever. My calendar is always with me and I will not book an appointment if I do not have my calendar. So be okay with saying, hey, I got to get back to you and check that out and see. Um, so that you're aware of what it is that you need to do. So uh, thank you guys for, hopefully this was helpful. Um, we do have the recording, so we'll get you guys the recording. Thank you ladies so much for sharing your insights. I actually learned some stuff, so I really appreciate it. And I'm just excited. I'm praying for your kids as they go back to school. And if you don't mind, I'm, I'm actually gonna say a prayer before we hop off here. Um, just to cover our kids. So dear Heavenly Father, God, we're just grateful. We're grateful for um, the opportunity to come together today. God, thank you for the hearts and minds to be willing to hop on a call like this. God, I'm praying that each person, whether they're a student, a mother, a single mom, um, full time in this business, God, that you give us the wisdom and the discernment to work this business in the way that we should in order to be able to flourish and not feel overwhelmed, God. Praying that you cover our kids as they go back to school, that you put them in the right hands, God, that you put them in the right um, environments and that you just cover them with your blood. God, we're just grateful for how we're going to flourish in our businesses as we go throughout this school year and beyond, how we're going to be disciplined and we're going to create the habits that we need to in order to be our best self. So God, we just praise you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I do see a question. Um, the schedule on my iPad is called no idea, but I will post it. I'm gonna post. <laughs> I'm gonna post. I'll post the template for you guys where I got it from. Um, I did get a picture, but we can take another one so everybody can. Um, yep, block off time for my family. Any other questions? So whoever's on and still wants to take a picture, if you guys want to pull your camera up, um, I'll take a picture so you guys aren't off caught off guard, huh? <laughs> Just. A, all right, ready? I'm gonna go through three screens. So one, two, three, smile, keep smiling. Hold on, one to the next page. Hold on, one, two, three, smile. Okay, one last page. All right, ready? One, two, three, and smile. Got it. All right, guys, have an amazing day. I'll get you guys the recording. Peace out.